Greetings, everyone. P. Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Ranking the Albums. Thanks for spending some of your Sunday here with us each and every Sunday morning, at least Sunday morning, here in uh, North America, East Coast. Uh, we do this particular show now every Sunday. So uh, today we're going to take a look at a band that has been around since the late 90s. Founding member, guitarist, and vocalist. Matt Pike, also a member of the legendary Doom band Sleep. The band, of course, is High on Fire. Kind of an interesting band to describe. You know, Matt, of course, comes from Sleep, Doom, Stoner, right? That's basically what that band plays. High on Fire, though, is an interesting proposition because while Matt takes his influences, you know, that he perpetrates in sleep uh this band is not necessarily a doom band although there are doomy moments uh they're not necessarily a stoner band although there are stoner moments uh there's lots of sludge going on for those of you who are into sludge metal which is a little bit different right there's lots of that going on there's also plenty of thrash going on in this band they have really have their own sound they don't really they don't really you know music's not much like any other band uh, and they have a very consistent album from, from record to record. Uh, I have l listened to these guys on and off for years, but I only really started buying uh, their albums not that, that long ago. So I've been listening to these quite a bit uh, over the last couple of months. And uh, we've got eight, uh, eight studio albums in total. Current lineup of the band, like I said, features Matt Pike on guitars and vocals. You've got Jeff Matz on bass who's been in the band since 2005, and then they've uh, done a very recent change on the drum kit. You've got, uh, since last year, a guy named Cody Willis on the drums, and he replaces longtime drummer Des, Des Kensel, who was with the band for quite a long time. So that's the current lineup, but I will probably mention uh, some additional lineup configurations as we go along with the ranking. So like I said, again, I'm going to start with my number eight and then i'm going to work my way back to number one so uh, i'm going to go with number eight i'm going to go with their most recent album from 2018 it's their eighth studio album electric messiah awesome cover right pretty cool stuff this is the third album in a row where they utilize producer kurt balu uh who is you know pretty well known in like punk and hardcore circles and uh i think at this point in time the band have really seemed to find a producer that really works with their style uh the whole album here was kind of meant as a tribute to lemmy who from motorhead of course who had recently passed away at the time and you can hear the motorhead influence on plenty of songs on here although there is always a motorhead influence in their music i have found as i've kind of been listening to these albums uh spewing from the earth totally sounds like you know more sludgy more stonery motorhead um you got two great epics on the album steps of the ziggurat slash house of enlil and sanction annihilation both big crushing uh sludge stoner doom you know monsters never ending onslaught of riffs i mean there's plenty of riffs on these albums uh the title track is more of a fast-paced thrash again mixed with that little bit of motorhead feel uh you got matt who's got these roaring vocals i don't even know another way to describe his vocal style it's just roaring uh the pallet mass crushing crushing song uh love the riffs on the super heavy god of the godless uh free Buddha kicks ass as does the witch and the christ uh, closer drowning dog almost sounds like Viking metal to me, a la like maybe a Monomarth, and I think it's more the vocal style of uh, of Matt. Um, I think uh, there's very similarities there with the Monomarth. Uh, I think it's a really good album. Comes in at number eight though, right? Uh, like I said, all these albums are fairly consistent in quality. There's not really much of a drop off here. There's no stinker albums here at all. So, you know, my ranking could change at any time. Again, I'm sort of newish to the band. So for me, you know, your mileage may vary if you've been listening to these albums for years and years and years. Uh, and saying all that, there's kind of a sameness to all these albums too, which may turn off some people. Uh, my number seven, I'm going to go with the 2000 debut. All right, The Art of Self-Defense. Here we've got Matt Pike on board with Des Kensel on drums, like I mentioned before, and George Rice was in the band uh, on bass guitar at the time, and I'm going to let Tala out because uh, Huskies don't like to sit and listen to album rankings. 
both Tala and Maya were like, nah, daddy, we're not interested in High on Fire. Uh, so here we got the six tracks. Loud and Furious Sludge Metal. Okay, not quite Doom. The earlier albums are definitely much, much more of like what you consider sludge metal, right? Maybe think of like the first... Uh, First Mastodon album, right? That's There's plenty of sludge bands out there. Um, but uh, sludge, to me, is like a really dirty, grimy uh, f- kind of form of like doomy thrash. I don't even know. I, it, it, it's, sludge is really hard to kind of pinpoint because there's lots of bands who claim to play sludge music. Uh, you know, very uh, gravelly, you know, vocals, not quite death metal growls, kind of that roar thing going on big booming heavy riffs the riffs you know the rhythms are just pounding that's kind of sludge it's it's sludge sometimes people think sludge is really slow music high on fire's music not really all that slow um let's see you got some really uh great drumming and nasty riffing on baghdad you got ten thousand years that's a little slower really heavy riffs crushing um blood from zion definitely more upbeat okay got lots of fuzz lots of groove on uh last you got Big, big bass riffs on the pulverizing fire face. Uh, Always hear the bass in this band, which is really cool. You got the 10 plus minute closer, Master of Fists. Uh, Again, that got that sludgy, doomy thing going on. Riffs are just enormous. Um, And the grooves are like, the the word I used to describe the grooves on, they're leaden, right? They're just like, it's just, don't know another way to describe it. Great debut, easily their most raw album. But so, so heavy. Uh, pretty cool cover art. Most of these albums have pretty cool cover art. So that's my number seven. We're going to move on to number six, which uh, this album, I think, might rank higher for uh, many people. Um, I like it a lot. But, you know, got to put these albums somewhere. Very cool cover art here. I remember when this was released. Uh, Relapse Records, of course. Blessed Black Wings. All right. Third album. Bassist George Rice is replaced by Joe Preston here for this album, uh, produced by Steve Albini. Early in the career, man, it's like every album, different producer. I think they were really trying to find someone who can kind of can figure them out or, you know, kind of got what they were doing. Um, so there's a lot of experimenting from production, from producer to producer, production to production from the f- first bunch of albums. Um, Devolution, kickoff track, really great. Frantic metal kind of like a head-on collision of like early motorhead early voivod if you like noisy fast furious stuff there you go uh the face of oblivion mid-tempo crusher massive riffs massive drumming cometh down hessian as that's kind of a weird song here it's got kind of like a punk hardcore feel to it um matt's vocals are just absolutely just shredding everything in sight on this one uh the title track here absolute killer riffs and the song is so bone crushingly heavy blessed black wings great great song it's across the bridge has some kind of interesting like middle eastern acoustic guitars okay you'll see that a few times on on this album and the album that comes after it um but then it's got a big doomy vibe as the kind of song keep continues going on you got silver black big and booming and heavy uh you got a very cool instrumental closer sons of thunder which is moody at times thunderously heavy it's got some wild guitar solos from matt pike really good stuff really good album actually really good album it's my number six though could be higher for some people like i said a lot of people when i kind of read around and i see people talking about these albums uh, a lot of people really gravitate towards that one as well as this one all right this is the album i was just kind of referencing before death is this communion all right fourth album from 2007 Another one of their more notable albums that was getting them lots of attention. Uh, here, the albums are starting to get a little longer. Songs are longer, more tracks. We're going from like 40 minutes now to like pushing, you know, 55 minutes, pushing an hour. 11 tracks, just under 60 minutes on this particular one. We got Jeff Matz replacing Joe Preston on bass. Uh, you got the title, the kickoff track, Fury Whip. Kind of sounds like early Slayer to me. Uh, from the production to the riffs, you know, the riffs are just enormous on here. You've got Seattle producer Jack Endino. Okay, he's worked with a lot of the Seattle grunge bands and lots of other bands post the grunge scene. Um, getting some really good sounds out of the band, though. I like the production on this album quite a bit. Uh, Waste of Tiamat, uh, again, brings back some of those Middle Eastern flavors 
from the album before, from Blessed Black Wings that I mentioned. Uh, and again, mixing it together with their kind of sludgy, doomy, motorhead, thrashy intensity. Pretty interesting combination, I think. Uh, title track, Slow, Massive, Doom Laden. Uh, Dez's drums are intricate. He's a really good drummer, right? It's kind of a shame that he's no longer with the band, but man, great drumming on these albums. And I think as the albums kind of go along later in their career, his drumming just gets more more intricate for a style of music that you wouldn't think kind of needs that kind of drumming. But once you kind of hear all these kind of tricky things he's doing, I'm like, oh yeah, this, this works quite, quite well. Uh, Turk, heavy song, Rumors of War, killer. Uh, you got the last three tracks on here, Cyclopean Scape, Ethereal, and Return to NOD are all kind of like mid pace sludgy, stoner bangers. Uh, Although each are kind of long, so we're looking six, seven minutes each. Yeah, you know, maybe they could have trimmed a little bit off. I think it's a really solid album. You got two, like, weird little throwaway instrumentals that don't really do much of anything. They're kind of like time wasters here. Uh, and I, I think maybe the album, like some of the last couple tracks, could have been shaved a little bit. Um, but otherwise, some really, really strong stuff on this album. It's just, to me, it's a little on the long side. And you got, like, me, you know, the two, the two instrumentals... Don't really do much of anything, and maybe one or one or two of the final three tracks could have been cut by like thirty seconds to a minute. They just seem a little over long to me. But overall, though, I love the production on this one. Uh, it's a big, heavy album, and uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. So that's number five, number four. I'm gonna go with their 2015 release, which is their seventh album, Luminiferous. Another really cool, kind of ominous looking cover. All right. Uh, this one, I, they're off uh, Relapse at this point. They're on E1 Music. Okay. So here you've got uh, Kurt Bailu, okay, who I mentioned earlier, produced their most recent album. This is the second time in a row he's producing the band. He's also from Converge, if you ever, very famous, uh, kind of like hardcore punk band. Um, and here we've got uh, the Pike, Matt's Kensel trio right again uh this one sounds really really in your face okay big heavy just bludgeoning sound uh the black plot smokes gravelly vocals terrific riffs um Car excuse me carcosa just absolutely bludgeons with just some ridiculous ridiculous riffs ridiculous um the sunless years again big fat tremendous guitars uh Love the sound of this album. Um, Slave the Hive, pure thrash. Again, a lot of thrash being incorporated in some of these later albums. You got the fist-pumping stoner vibe of The Falconist. Uh, you got the, the Cave, which has lots of atmosphere. Very different kind of psychedelic in nature. Not something they've ever done before. I would like to hear more of this, actually. It'd be nice to kind of mix things up, because like I said, some of these albums are a little on the samey side. So I would like to hear what they kind of bring forth on the cave. It's kind of like this, like I said, it's like this atmospheric, psychedelic, bluesy, stoner, doomy type of thing. I like that. Uh, title track goes back to more rampaging thrash metal. And then you got the Lethal Chamber, which is the closer, is near 90 minutes of big, beefy, stoner sludgy bliss um you know the the bass is huge the guitar riffs are enormous uh and, I, and matt's vocals just roar throughout this entire thing uh, absolute killer album this one could rank higher too i really do enjoy the the latter period albums right again because i'm coming kind of fresh into this band uh i'm actually starting i've started listening to them you know in much larger scope uh after they've released their, you know, their, their most recent album, which is now a few years ago already. So uh, I wasn't actually buying these when they came out. So like I said, some of these newer ones may rank lower for some people. The older ones might rank higher. Okay. Uh, one of the old ones, though, which I absolutely love, is their second album from 2002, Surrounded by Thieves. Another really cool album cover. Um, yeah, this is their first album for Relapse Records, and the band... You know, now incorporating more faster paced, I think, stoner metal elements into their music, right? Still lots of sludge going on here, but there's, you know, the, the, the stoner, faster stoner stuff, the faster thrash elements starting to come into play here. Um, Matt's vocals just gravelly amid all the pounding drums on Eyes and Teeth, a terrific track. Um, Dez's drums lead in the awesome hung drawn and quartered what a great track he's got these great solos in the beginning of the song <clears throat> you got a furious assault of sludge metal fury uh which reminds me a little bit of 
Tom G. Warriors, especially the guitar, the guitar solos of uh, of Matt in in the songs, reminds me a little bit of Tom G. Warrior from Celtic Frost and Triptychon. Now, uh, you got Speedwolf, which has some absolutely massive riffing. The Yeti is another one, just big, big, just rampaging metal track. <coughs> You got uh, lots of snarling vocals and fast-paced metal tempos on Nemesis. Um, fuzz all over the place. I call it like the fuzz overload on the doom-laden epic uh, Thraft of Canaan. Uh, title track sounds like Motorhead. A lot of this stuff reminds me of Motorhead, actually, uh, if Motorhead was more of like a sludgy band. And uh, Razorhoof, Headbanging Delight. Killer album, one of their best. I, you know, when I was kind of doing and redoing this list, I had this ranked even higher. Um, but then the more I kind of listen to some of these other ones, I'm like, all right, man, I, I could probably place two of them a little bit above it. And uh, this one here probably is going to rank even higher for some folks. Uh, from 2010, their fifth album, Snakes for the Divine, with a really cool cover. All their album artwork is really good. Uh, second in a row with Jeff Matz on bass. You got uh, Greg Feidelman producing this one. Again, like I said, early on, every album, different producer. They finally settled on someone who seems to work for them now. Uh, another great sounding heavy album. Uh, again, more thrash coming into the band's repertoire at this point. Uh, the Furious title track kicks off the album. Um, great thrash, right? A-plus minutes, never gets boring at all. Uh, delivers some crushing riffs and blazing guitar solos. Uh, Frost Hammer, also another fast-paced, furious, furious track. Really intense drumming. Really love the drumming on these albums. Then things slow down for the doom-laden sludge of Bastard Samurai, uh, which is another really good track. Um, Matt's blood-curdling screams are all over this particular one. Uh, Ghost Neck is another fast-paced, kind of hardcore-ish uh, Ripper, a little bit of thrash elements there. Uh, Fire Flood and Plague, also fast. And then uh, the band gets a little bit slower, brings in some doom elements for the massive How Dark We Pray. Really good song there, um, which has some great guitar solos. Really, really great guitar solos. And then the album finishes up with uh, Holy Flames of the Fire Spitter. Another really good track. This is just an unrelenting album and uh, probably easily there. Um, fastest paced most just bludgeoning album start to finish i think so again i can see a lot of people picking this one as their favorite but my absolute favorite and again i, I kind of i changed this around quite a bit uh, i'm gonna go with their sixth album from 2012 de vermis mysterious okay kind of interesting cover there okay this is also kurt bellu on production all right He's, like I said, he's the guitarist for uh, hardcore punk legend Converge. Uh, overall sound is dirty, muddy, but it really works for this band. They got, you know, Matt, Matt Pike, Jeff Matz, and Des Kessel, again, holding down the trio on this one. Ten songs, 53 minutes. Uh, Serums of Leo kicks off the album in rampaging fashion. Lots of intricate drums. The riffs are as huge as ever. Uh, as they are on Bloody Knuckles, which is one of my favorites on the album. Just tremendous, tremendous song. You got Pure Thrash on Fertile Green. Uh, Madness of an Architect goes back to the kind of sludgy thing. You got the instrumental Sam Sara is just absolutely heavenly 70s kind of bluesy proto-metal doom. Love it. Love it. Uh, Kensel's Drums on this album are amazing, and he's just absolutely killing it on Spiritual, spiritual Rights, another really great track. Um, there's the Crushing Doom of King of Days, which is the longest song on this particular album. And then you got uh, just absolutely massive, massive riffing and bass playing on Romulus and Remus. Um, no, just killer, killer track. And then uh, Warhorn is another one, just a menacing, crushing closer, plenty of doom elements. Just an absolute kick-ass, kick-ass album. Again, uh, like I said, many of these are very, very similar in tone, in quality. So I could see, you know, a month from now I might change this, uh, this around. But I think this gives you a good idea of kind of some of the albums to really go for first if you're looking to investigate this band. So De Vermis Mysterious, number one. Snakes for the Divine, number two. Surrounded by Thieves, number three. Luminiferous, number four. Death is This Communion, number five. Number six, we're going to go with the great Blessed Black Wings. Number seven, the debut, The Art of Self-Defense. 
And then number eight, we're going to go with Electric Messiah. But like I mentioned above, even my bottom one at number eight is a really, really strong album. So can't go wrong with any of these. So if you haven't checked out High on Fire and you like really aggressive, kind of thrashy, sludgy, doomy music um, that, like I said, kind of at times reminds me of Motorhead just up in the ante on the ferocity and the extreme and extreme nature and, and uh, you know, very, very similar, just way, way bigger, bigger riffs, I think. But, uh, you know really good stuff eight albums so there's not like there's a ton to go check out so go and investigate let us know what you think uh let us know which ones you like and uh this is on the web at www.cetranquility.org we're on facebook we're on youtube all together all the damn time rank them as you like them in the uh, comments below remember there's no right or wrong answer here so um be curious to see what everybody comes up with in their rankings and uh, we'll see you real soon here on the channel with more album rankings uh coming up on each and every Sunday, we've got, over the next couple of weeks, we've got, um, I believe, next week is Flying Colors, the great prog, pop, rock super group featuring Mike Portnoy and Steve Morse and Neil Morse and Dave LaRue and Casey McPherson. Going to have Rick Labonte and George Lemie joining on that one. I believe that one's next week. Uh, we've also got, um, what else? Got all sorts of ones coming up. We've got in the coming weeks, we've got Tom Petty, we've got uh, Derek Sherinian, we have um, lots of cool metal and prog and hard rock rankings coming up. So stay tuned. I'm just I'm drawing a blank on some of the ones that are coming up. Oh, we got uh, Miriador coming up soon too. Clutch is coming up soon. Not Miriador. Uh, Morgable. Morgable. We've got Clutch coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Um, and uh, yeah. All sorts of good stuff. So stay tuned for that and more. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts. And uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to look it up here and tell you all the, the ranking shows that are coming because I'm like drawing a blank here. Uh, we've got, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Eric Johnson, Tom Petty, Cheap Trick, Magellan, Flying Colors. Like I mentioned, going to get to a Steve Vai ranking, Spiritual Beggars. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of stuff coming up. All sorts of stuff coming up. So stay tuned for all of them each and every Sunday, like I said. So I'm Pete Parta. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you real soon here on the channel. Bye-bye.